dividend. I'm over here in the I appreciate you coming because I know that you're interested in uh, changing your photos in a way that other people probably aren't as uh, confident in. And stuff today, as we look at these photos on Etsy, this photo is being sold for $50. This one is being sold for $33.48. Are you seeing my cursor moving? Shirley, you seeing it? Yes. Good, okay. So anyway, if you look at these, here's a Utah Butte. If you click on it, get a little closer view, and you're saying, wow, that's, that's out my backyard. Well, look at these photos down here. These are paintings. And again, we're working in the area of photography. So what's this got to do with us? So I looked up this person and it's Erin Hansen. And I looked at her, her paintings and how many were sold and what their prices were. And I think you're gonna be shocked to see how much some of these are because I, I saw some for up to 10 to $12,000. And as I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, are those any more different than what we can create in Photoshop and some of the programs I'm gonna show you tonight. This one is seven, some, some of these prints here go up to 7,000, but it depends on if you get a frame and so on. The yes, she's using real paint, we aren't, but I'm gonna show you some tricks that you can use. And then if you make a picture into a painting style that you really, really like, I'll show you how to make it so real that people will believe it's a painting. And you may say, well, that's cheating. It's your art, not anyone else's, it's yours. This is the program I'm gonna be using tonight. <clears throat> it's called Deep Art Effects. Are you seeing this screen? Still on it? Yep, assume that you're on unless we start yelling at you. Okay, good. Now, let's see, I got that off there. It says you can try this now, which is nice. When I first downloaded this and used it, uh, I had a lot of problems. One of them was they will not allow you to use it on more than one computer, which really infuriated me. So I started talking back and forth with them. They are in Germany. They did get back, they were very nice. And because of my uh, constant harping, they did change the way you can now go into their site and deactivate and then reactivate onto another computer. It's a lot easier now that <laughs> I was yelling at them so much. But anyway, when you get Deep Artifacts, you download it, make sure you get it for a PC or a Mac, and they show you the, some of the ideas here. Here's a desktop, your App Store, and Google Play. Now, one of the ways we're gonna make our pictures look like actual paintings, you'll use breathing color. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen again. Let's go desktop. How do I do this? I just wanna see, can you see me? Let's see, yeah, okay. There are two kinds of materials that you can use to make your pictures look actually like paintings. I have a download uh, screen for the one here, but this one's pretty easy to see. You can get this in any hobby store. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make your picture, you're gonna send it in or print it at home. If you have a good printer, you can make it a canvas print. Then you're gonna put this goop on top of it with a roller. You're gonna let it set up a little bit. Then you're gonna take a brush and you're gonna make the marks in the goop over the colors and images and contrast zones. And it will, when it dries, it will look exactly like a painting. And again, if you're, you don't have a lot of money, like a $7,000 to buy one of her prints, you can make one of yours that's gonna look probably just as good. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start up the
the program called Deep Art Effects. Jerry, what was the name of the stuff that you held up? I know it was Liquitex, but that's a brand yeah, name. Let me, uh, I have a, a thing here. There's a Pretty good. Here. It's called Breathing Color. Is okay. the name of the place, and this is called Glamour 2. It's a glitchy, cliche, or glitch, however you say it. Uh, here. And it's you can get it in gloss or matte, and it depends upon how you want the light to hit it. But I've been using this stuff, and it's amazing. And if you put it on canvas and then brush it, it looks exactly like a $7,000 print. It's amazing. All right, I'm going to try to get deep artifacts up here. Are you seeing the screen coming in for deep artifacts or do I have to go to another screen? We see it. It's gray. You should see it's that. gray and it says drop image here. Great. We're in. All right. This is what you get when you open it up. Not much going on. So up in the top, file, tools, etc. File is where you'll start and you'll say open. And then you go to wherever you put your photos that you want to work on. And I'll just start with D. Andrews. And when I open it, it shows up like this. Nice. Now, what do you do with it? Along the bottom of Deep Artifacts are like 120 presets. And that's where it's just getting started. Now, here's what it just did. It blew up. I've been having this problem. I've contacted them. They can't figure it out yet. So I just reopen it and I start again, and usually it settles down. I think part of the problem is when I make it really large, it gets mad. So we'll try it again. File, open. Here's our photos. There's Andrews. So again, along the bottom are all of these presets. Now I like some better than others, but it depends upon which photo you're applying it to. So let's just pick Epic. It's one of my favorites. It's not very far from the beginning, in case you want to get this. But they also do something else. The first one is called daily. They change the filter into here each day so that you can experiment with it. So sometimes they're like, since there's 120, you may not get down that far in the list. So that, let's just say I'll go over to Epic. When I double click it, It says your artwork is being creative. Now, one of the things you'll notice is taking a little time to do this. When I asked Shirley to send me pictures, I asked that she make them small because it takes time to do large ones. I'm talking minutes. In fact, there's some functions in here that actually will take a half a day. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. But you see what we've done, we've created some sort of an arty effect. You begin by looking at the intensity. Are you seeing my cursor for intensity? And when I turn it off, that's where we started. And here it is to the max. Brightness, contrast, you're familiar with all these if you've been using Photoshop or most art, art programs. So you can change those to create a feel. Saturation, we can take it black and white here, but we can do that elsewhere. Hue is interesting because maybe you have a set of curtains that you want to match in blue. Well, you can do it now. The blur, I don't use that for much. Uh, it blurs the picture. Sharpen, be careful with this. It's pretty edgy. Contours, there's a little bit of movement there, but eh, well, it basically increases the contrast of, of the situation. And bokeh the same way, it, it softens the picture. Now, down here we have grayscale. If you click that little box, by the way, I'm gonna reset this so that they'll all go back to their original positions. And is this I, big enough for everybody to see? I've got a big monitor. I just want to know if maybe we should have Jerry stretch it out a little more. 
How's it yeah, looking? The problem is uh, it, it might be crashing more because of that. Oh, I see. Okay. I, okay. I got it as actually about as big as I can go here. Okay. That's fine. Keep, Thanks. We'll keep playing with it. That's fine. Uh, here's a grayscale image. Now, of course, we can make much better grayscale images in Photoshop, but this at least gives you a key as to what it would look like if you tried it. This is a very important one. Original colors means, okay, what did you start with? Well, we started with a very vibrant, colorful picture, a very beautiful photo. We added epic to it. But what if you put the original colors back on it like that? Now we have the arty effect and the original colors. And you may say, well, that's not what I paid the program for. <laughs> I want to do my own new colors. You can also mirror the image because there's a lot of photographers think that things have to move from left to right. Okay, you can do that too. Now, these just show you ways of looking at the image. I can split it. I kind of like this one because you get a hold of it and you can see what you had to begin with and how you're moving forward. This shows you a little inset and I don't use those. I, I mainly leave it on the main one. Okay, now the nice thing about this program, if I decide to try another one, let's say abstract one, the second one over, it will remember the first one that we put in and not do it on the new image we're looking at. And this is good because you don't want to keep applying more and more layers, you want to see what it does on the original. And here's what we have. And again, we can grayscale it, look at that as a sketch. We can put the colors back, very nice. So that's how it starts. And this is only the beginning. As I move down here, Everything has a little picture to kind of give you an idea. If I say mosaic two, look how different this is. <clears throat> Again, start with small images, get a feel for it. And then if you like that one, bring back the big one, or I'm gonna show you a way to enlarge these inside this program and it works pretty well. Okay, and now I can, change the intensity of that effect. Original, full tilt. Okay, let's go on down, take another spin down the alley here. I like abstract 10, that works really well. So in this first part of the program, we're, we're gonna experiment a little bit. Then I'm gonna take these images back into Photoshop and show you even more things you can do with them. Now, if you're watching the picture being developed and you say, ah, I don't like it, you can stop it right there. So you're not wasting 10 more seconds. But we'll go ahead and let this one run. Okay, so here's our intensity. Off a small amount. So each time you click on a different effect, it goes back to the original photo. Correct. Okay. Very important. Abstract three. Yeah, when I found that out, I was very happy because there are some other things you can do in here that it will stack on top of it. And it gets pretty complicated. I like the pictures because then you can kind of get an idea. Hey, I really like that one. Wasn't that a little critter with four legs, yeah, you can remember what it was. All right, I'm gonna reset these. This is how it would come in normally. I can then say, well, I wanna decrease or increase that effect. All right, over here, if you wanna flip the image for some reason, let's say it's really an abstract, you can do that. You can cut the image, which means you can actually go in and crop it right here in this program. So as soon as the image comes up, I'll show you how to do that. So if I decide I don't want all of that yellow building, I can just do this. If I don't want all those flowers, I can change any dimension I want. And when you hit the return key, you now have a cropped image. If I reset these, if I edit, I say, 
do you see where the word edit is by the word file? If you come down and say reset, because you decided, ah, I really didn't like that crop. Let's go on down a little further. As you see, you have a lot to choose from. Some of them are really wild. Like if you, if you like cubism, okay, have at it. Again, use a small file to get a feeling for what you like. And then once you found it, bring a bigger one in. Pretty wild, huh? Here's the so original I, colors, look at that. So having worked with this for a while, have you found that you have favorite ones? I sure do. <laughs> yes, I do. I'll be, uh, I'll be punching on those as we go. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll make sure you know which ones they are. Zeneda is one of my favorites. It's the microphone. <clears throat> Again, as photo artists, we're looking to push the boundaries of what can be done with a photograph. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Uh, Jerry, what, what's the size of this original photo? Uh, it's about 2,000 pixels. Wide? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it. Uh, the thing is, I, I had her send even smaller ones in, and I shouldn't have done that because I realized they were too small. I did a little work and got some of them larger, but 2,000 is a good way to start, two or 3,000 pixels across. All right, let's go for another one. I like, four lock is funny because it's a sketch. Let's see if I can stop this one. I don't want that one. I want to sketch it. It's called Forelock. And I have other better sketch programs, but this gives you a pretty good idea if the lines of the picture are going to work. It does it pretty, pretty fast. Again, original colors with the sketch. In this case, I would take the brightness down a little bit, but increase the contrast. You can do a little sharpening. Jerry, do you use JPEG files for this? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. you cannot use raw files, have to convert to JPEG. No, I haven't been able to do anything with raw. It likes JPEG. Okay. Thank you. Going on down, I really have had fun. Let's see, I got to move this out of my way. There you go. I need to look. Oh, I use Wolf today. If you've been, if you ever go to my uh, Facebook page, you will see what I did with Wolf. I'll bring those up in a little bit to show you. I, I was at a ZZ Top concert at a uh, motorcycle rally in uh, Sturgis, and I decided I wanted to do something a little different with the background. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really cool. All right, let's go on down. The modern arts are fun. They really push the boundaries. Some are better than others in terms of the image and its style. But I kind of like this one. See what I mean? Bam. That's the original colors are still on. If I reset this, then they all go back to this is the this is the image style that will come in originally when you use that particular preset. Okay, let's do this. Levels up here in the upper right says level of detail. Right now it's set at maximum. That means your computer is gonna be put under a little more pressure to get it done. You can go high or very high, but it really makes a difference in what you see. So if I say, okay, let's do modern art at a level high, we'll look at it. You see how there's less detail in that type of structure. If I say, now nah, let's go back to maximum. 
and then you try it again, what a difference. So I recommend using maximum unless you have a computer with like two gigs of RAM in it, <laughs> then you've got a problem. And it does take longer to do. See the difference? Lots more detailing going on here. Okay, now I'm going to go for another image. Let's look at this one. And I know it's, it's small, I apologize. It was my fault, I got it too small, but I'll try to blow it up and show you some things. I'm gonna go back, let's see, this one I'm gonna use Modern Art 4. So I'm gonna go down here. Here's Modern Art 5, so I guess Modern Art 4 was before that, I hope. It just occurred to me, I wonder, I've never found out if there's a way of looking for them. Here it is, Modern Art 4. Watch this. We now have a work of art, and I come up to the word file, and I say save. Now I have two choices. If I just save it, it'll come back out as the same size as you see here, which is pretty small. I can also say, save print file. What does that mean? It means it blows it up, makes it a lot larger. It takes time to do that. We might try one, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say stay, save right now. I'm gonna call it forest. It's a ping file. Don't be afraid of those, they will not hurt you. I'm gonna put it on my desktop and save it. We'll come back to that a little later. But I really like the way this one came out with, with that particular uh, style. Let's open another one. Let's look at this one. Again, small. But this one, I'm going to look for one called Cordville. I forget where it is. These aren't in fair, they should be in uh, alphabetical order. Crankle. Here it is. Now, Cordville, as I look at the picture, it uh, looks like a goose coming at me, but it has green tones in it. I don't know if you can see those. So when I click that, I get this kind of a landscape. So I have the green showing. If I say, what were the original colors? You see, it's kind of muted. So if I keep this on, the yellows have been intensified, the greens certainly have, and so have the blues. So I'm pretty happy with what I see there. So again, I'll say file, save. And what I do is I write down the name of the filter in the typing. That way I'll remember what I did if I decide to come back with a bigger picture. So on the desktop, save, I now have Cordville. Okay, let's open Shirley. This one I had a lot of fun with. The uh, one that I started with is called Canvas. I don't remember what that is, so I'm gonna have to look for it. You, but it gives you an idea of how many you have to, you can search through and play with in a day. It is kind of sad that they're not in alphabetical order. Yeah, and I don't know that there's a place to do a search, but here's Canvas. It's these spirals, somebody's doing, uh, you know, the steel wool thing. So when I click it, I get this. And this is like a beginning, because I can say, well, what were the original colors? Well, I had that. Let's reset that, it's okay. Here's a grayscale. I don't like that, I like the colors. Now, all of this that I've shown you is under what's called art style AI. Have you noticed that any student that knows how to do artificial intelligence on his programming skills will probably make a lot of money because everybody's using it and talking about it. And I taught it in robotics back in the 90s, and some of my students became robotic engineers, so I was there. I felt really good that they got jobs early. But this picture, I really like it a lot. But you have other cho choices up here. But let's go back to where it says File Edit, AI Tools. 
you can intelligently resize this. And one of them that I did went from like, uh, let's see, it was about four megabytes and it took it up to 191 and it looked pretty good. I couldn't believe it. Removing background, I've been playing with that. It's not worth using too much. Colorize, don't even touch it. Uh, it takes forever and the results are really not good. Batch processing, the one that I said, well, let's try oil filter. And you can change some of the levels and ranges of it, but it will give you a preview button, which is kind of nice. And so it shows you how terrible it looks. I've done everything I can with this filter and it just is not as good as anything you'll find in Photoshop. So pretty much avoid it. Generate with AI. This is a crazy, crazy thing. If you've been looking at my uh, website, you'll see I've been doing portraits and people say, are you photographing people or how you, no, they don't exist. And here's why. If I say artwork, I'm going to take her picture, the information in it, and I'm going to have the artificial intelligence create a totally new piece of art. This does not exist anywhere except here and will never, ever be duplicated. Artwork. Is that based upon the photo? It's using that as a beginning. Really? This thing is nuts. I have had more fun. I've actually spent a half a day clicking through here. And then if you go to my website, you'll see what I did with the images. Now, I, when I was in high school, I told my art teacher, Mr. Mucho Canals, that I hated modern art. He says, what are you doing Saturday? I said, I don't know. He says, well, check with your parents. I'm going to take you somewhere. So he takes myself and a, one of my fellow students, and he drives us all the way to the Toledo Art Museum. And he taught me what modern art was really about. It changed my life. Some of these are pretty wild. But every now and then I'll pick one. This looks like some kind of a seashore doesn't it? or isthmus. But like I said, once you start, uh, you better take your time. Now, like this photo here, if I say, oh, I kind of like that, I'm going to save it. I just call it um, portrait. Jerry, were those all from the same original image? Yep. You will oh, never God. see the same thing twice. Oh my God. Okay. Now, I've kind of figured out what these guys are doing. They've put some other generative art pieces in that software because I'm getting a lot of people coming through. Again, they're never the same, but I'm starting to see that a lot of these that are real wild are pretty, what I would call, uh, pretty wide band. You, you can find just about anything. But look at this crazy stuff that comes out of this. And again, whatever you work with here is yours. No one will ever be able to reproduce it. I've been doing this for weeks and I've never seen the same one twice and I never will. Aren't they crazy? Like a little butt there. <laughs> okay, so there is an info button here. You can check for your updates. It also gives you videos to tell you how to use some of these uh, particular AI instruments. Let's see, you remember I told you that if you put your picture in and then you click on the different presets, it always goes back to the original one. This one doesn't. So I'm gonna go to find something I wanna play with a little bit. Because once you put this in and then you apply a filter to it, it will just use the one on the screen. And that's kind of interesting. So now I'll come down here. I've got my canvas, but look at this. I have one called oil painting. I'm gonna throw that on it and see what happens. Bam, I have an oil painting. If I decide I wanna keep it, again, you go up to file, but it used the one that was generated in the AI, as long as you understand the difference there. 
All right, let's go to another picture. Let's go to this one. Love this one. And something happened in here, surely, that I'm, I'm had it happen. Circles in the sky. Are, are, are people able to see there's a series of them? I don't know where they came from, but when you do some of these filters, it really makes them pop forward and it's not always a good thing. So what I'm gonna suggest, if you find a photo that needs a little bit of repair, do it before you pull it into here because some of those will probably look not so good. So I'm gonna try Canvas again on this one. And you'll see what I mean. All those little oh yeah are now really punched out. Okay, so put that in your notes. This is this is something that I found by accident by looking at these photos. Now it's not always the same. It depends upon how abstract the image becomes. But see, it's still there, but now it's part of the the entire assembly. Let's go to another one. Let's try, uh, let's try modern art four again. See him again. So this is a case where you'd go in and you modify that in Photoshop, which is easy to do. Uh, let's use, let's go to abstract six. I like the abstracts because of where I'm going to be pointing you. And this one is just black. And you say, ah, I can't get, can't put that on the wall. Well, then go next door to Feast and you get this effect. Again, you see what's happening in the sky. Abstract five. It's kind of bright and so on. All right, now I'm going to close this down. I'm going to get out of Safari. No, I'm not. I'm going to go back to here. Remember these? Yes. Price up to $34,000 for that image, Saguaro. Okay. Memorize this $34,000 image. But is that sold or is that asking? Most of these were sold. This one, the Saguaro is sold. Sold. Amazing, huh? Yeah, she's a big deal. I looked her up and uh, she's got a lot going. Okay. Canvas print rolled. You can get it, original oil painting and so on. Now, again, she's standing there with paint, brush, and making each one of these. And she has a fantastic uh, array of colors and she knows how to use them. I studied her a little bit. She really knows her stuff. But let's say you would like a painting. You don't have 34,000. So I would say, well, let's take a look at Cordville. I'm gonna blow this up so you can see it. Are you on my screen? I'm in Photoshop. Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay, good. Now, the first thing you notice, it's a bit soft. And that's okay for some effect, but here's two things I do for a lot of my images now. I'm going to show you why you need to get Topaz Denoise and Topaz Sharpen. Because between these two, you can do just about anything with a, prob with a problematic image. I'm gonna use Sharpen AI. <clears throat> Thirty-four thousand dollars. <laughs> quick, quick question, Jerry. Sure. Um, can you work with a layer? In other words, if you have a, a duplicate layer of the base, and then you run it on, can you run it on the layer? And I'm then glad you mentioned that. I'm going to show you some cool stuff about that. Okay. By the way, when you get here, it's too small. You go up to the top where it says hundred percent and you zoom it, I go 400, and then you can go back and forth and you can see if the effect is doing what it is you, you, brought, you bought the painting for. You have standard motion blurs, out of focus, too soft, 
And each one of these affects this totally differently. You have to practice to see which one is the one for you. I like out of focus normal for almost everything. As you're looking at the bottom, it says out of focus normal updated. Okay, if I go to another one, it says noisy. This one down here says loading. It's not showing you the change in the picture yet until it has updated. Once it, now it has shown you the change. You see how that works? I'm gonna show you a trick. If you say too soft normal, you say, yeah, I'm gonna like that anyway, go ahead and apply it. Don't even wait for it to be updated because it doesn't care. It's going to apply it anyway. There's before, after. It's not much, but it's a little. I'll try to make it bigger. See the difference? Tiny amount. And that's good enough for what I wanted to do. All right. From here, you have a lot of choices. If you're going to make a real painting effect, I would suggest using some of the, uh, well, you can try this in, in Photoshop. I'm not real excited about it, but it's called oil paint. They have improved it a lot over the last year. I've moved the stylization, cleanliness, scale, bristle default all down to zero. And I'm gonna say, okay. And it created a very slight amount of painting effect. Do you see it? It's yep. slight. And you say, well, I don't like that. I'll undo it. What I like to do, I'm gonna put that back here. What I like to do is this. I like to use other filters like Gixie Picks because now we're gonna make it look like a real painting. Because I think this is a good start. And I have all of these presets down here at the bottom that I can click on and get different colors and effect. And I just kind of go down the line until I see something I kind of like. It also has to do with what color your drapes are in your walls, as we all know as artists. So let's say that's kind of interesting. I can come over to the right, there's a brush style. It says, well, you can change that brush and it'll affect the way these images are produced on the, on the canvas. You also have, let's go down to artist palettes full. It changes the whole coloration. So what I'm saying is you have a lot of choices going on here. Right now, I'll just say file. Let's do, uh, I'm going to quit this. And I'm going to quit that. And I'm back to where I started. Let's go to another way. Filter. I use this one from exposure software called Snap Art 4. You want a painting? You're going to get it. I can say impressionistic. See if I can bring that up. There we go. And you so see these what, are all different plugins that you've purchased for yes. Photoshop. Okay. Yes. I start with deep artifacts and then I go forward with these. Here's a textured canvas. Here's a vignette, which is almost exactly what we started with, just a little darker. Thick paint. Now, do you remember that woman, her thick paint style? Mm -hmm. There it is. And I can come over here and make all kinds of changes in the brush size, stroke, photorealism. In fact, I'll go a little higher on that. And I'll say apply. And this is what we get for our money. Look at that. Look at this right back here. View, reading, here. Remember that? These, hmm. these are all sold. Everything here is sold, sold. So Jerry, if you were going to go through the motions on this and you were going to enter it into a exhibition, yeah. what would you call it? Photo What's art. What's your media? And I would call it mixed media photo art mixed media, because that's what you're doing. You're mixing different kinds of effects and you're gonna have it on a canvas and you're gonna have some kind of a gloss on it. And you've also worked through two or three filters. So it's photo art. 
But take a look at this. And then mixed media because of the, the product yes. that you put on it and did the brush strokes. You got it. But this if you did not do that, then would it would be just photo art? Photo photography. Art. It's yeah. still photography. You can't, I wouldn't call it photography for the reason it's not. <laughs> it really but is. that would be, they may not have a category for photo art. Right. I had that. Well, in 1994, I had my students uh, working in these kinds of things. And we had the first all digital art show at the, Univer at the Museum of Art in Akron. And a guy walked up to me and he says, uh, this is all yours? And I said, yeah. He says, uh, how'd you do that? I said, I did it on a computer. I remember this is 1994. He says, no, you didn't. I said, well, I did. I said, do you want a, do you want a uh, technical description or do you want to just, you know, talk? He goes, well, okay, tell me how you did it. So I did in detail, and he became my best friend, and we walked around the whole gallery the rest of the night. He'd never seen or knew that this was even possible in 1994. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now anybody can do it. If I say auto tone, look at that. You, you are just beginning now to work with your image. You say, well, I'd like to increase the blues or I don't like the greens that much. Then you go to hue saturation. You say, would you change that to green and kind of desaturate those for me? Yeah, a little bit, there you go. Well, and now like you're it. making just normal Photoshop type edits. You got it. So what I'm saying is deep artifacts is where you begin, but where you end up, oh my gosh. This is Cordville, by the way, if you want to reproduce this at home. All right, Mr. now, Jerry, go ahead. Uh, are all of these things running within Photoshop? Uh, no, Deep Art Effects is its own program. It is separate. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I have all these. Uh, here's the other thing. You can, there's another thing you can do, but you have to have a, a kind of a special image. I'm going to open. And I think I put some in here. Yeah. I'm going to open a picture I shot of this biker at Sturgis. Isn't he cute? Watch this. Do you see where it says reset? Right above it, there's a little human sitting right there. I'm going to click on the first button to the right that shows the human in white, in the background in black. I'm going to come over and pick a I use Venade, I love that one. Watch what happens. Bam. The background is the only thing changed. Now, come on, isn't that great? And then you say, well, how about if we make him interesting in the background normal? You click the next button over, watch this. There he is. Very cool. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for applause there. I didn't get any. So. I had to find my mute button. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But the point is, look, look what you can do now with these buttons. If I'm going to click him again, I want a different background. Here's one called photography. Let's see what it comes up with. I haven't tried this one yet. Now the black, the, the one that talks about backgrounds and stuff up the AI tools, uh, I didn't find it very good. There's much better ways of doing that kind of stuff. Bam. I mean, this is just fun. And you can find something really crazy. Gothic, let's do a Gothic. And you see, it wasn't a lot of difference. If you click here, he's gothic. I don't think there's a lot of people doing this kind of work. Let's try. I like I I R A. It's pretty pretty tight. 
again, just the background, see? I wouldn't use it on him, it's pretty, <laughs> it gets pretty nutty, okay? Now, all the things we've been doing, I've been doing them in art style. We also have some other things to work with. I'm going to reset this and I'm going to see if I can reset him. Okay, everything's back to normal. But I'm going to use one of your pictures instead of his. So I'll pick out, let's do, let's go to this one again. Now, up here, it says art style AI. Beside it, it says abstract. If you click that, you get a whole different look down here. It says add new or random. These are totally different functions. If I click random, the dice, Rod is an expert, I get some of these. I can click another one, this. And you see they're really jumbled. If I double click that one, I did the uh, one you see the cursor, it takes a little more time to work on because it's using an artificial uh, preset that they've created out of the air. And it's using it, it says this is going to take about a minute, 50, now it's 58 seconds. As you're watching it, you can say, eh, I don't know about that one. Okay, stop it. Been lucky I haven't had too many crashes. Let's go to this one, the lighter blues. And again, I use the little peer in window to kind of decide if I'm going to keep this or not. And you see the sky's crenulated, look almost like it's beaten copper. And I'd say, eh, let's stop that too. So that's one way you can create all kinds of new effects in abstract AI. See how this one's totally different. And none of these will ever be the same. What if I say add, or here, I'm gonna take the, I hit the uh, trash can and I can get these out of my way. What about add new? Well, I can come back and I can add a photo or any abstraction that you already have, double click it. It now uses its palette, its organization, to create what's going to happen with these buildings. Somebody said, it looks like there's an infinite number of ways of working, and I would agree with that as a scientist. The word infinite is pretty big, <laughs> if you really think about it in terms of geology or astronomy. Thirty-one seconds. This is a good, if you're using, if you like this kind of stuff I'm showing you, I would highly recommend you jam your computer as full of memory as you can. You'll need it. And so, memory is pretty cheap, right? So to fill in a second here while that's generating, I just happened to go on Facebook while we're chatting and there is, an, a, there is a community group out there that's called Deep Artifacts. Correct. There are 11,000 members. <laughs> yep. 11.3K <laughs> yep. members. Yeah, whenever I get around a photographer who's, you know, he's a, he, he only has a photo, he'll never change it. I say, well, that's fine. You know, there's a couple million photos that look just like yours. But I guarantee you, you can make stuff here no one's ever seen before. And it is a public a public group, so you do not have to join it to see the artwork. Even better. There is some amazing things out here, just scrolling through it. Yep, but you're going to be doing this now after I'm done, aren't you? I don't know. You see the difference here? Now that we've created all of this, with this picture, I can get rid of that and go do something totally different again. One of the things I experimented with was this picture. Let's see if I can get this to come up. Can you see Billy Gibbons? Is he on your screen? Yes. Okay, good. Notice the background that was all created in deep artifacts.
This is the original I started with. Now, how did I do it? Let's say that I want to cre recreate that kind of background. I say open. I go to find that picture on my desktop here. And he's right here. This is how I started. And I said, okay, I need to get back to art style and I need to create something in that, that affects the whole picture. And as I do that, I say, well, that's kind of cool, but I don't want it over him. So what do I do? I need an answer from the audience. What do I do to make it look like the one that I now have on? Click on the figures on the left. You do what? Click on those little, little figure icons on the left. You are the winner. So I click this one. Yep. Get that. How hard was that? I want to flip them around. Oh, you got a teenager in the house. You want to freak them out? Go for it. So I can just sit here and play until I get a background that I think works with his particular stance and so on. And I found a couple I like. By the way, joke, that was interesting. See, it's kind of subtle, but it works. It works with this image very well. Yeah, it almost looks like there's no effect at all. Exactly. Here's the difference. See, not having the, been there. There's the difference. It's very subtle. Now, if I want to increase that, remember, I can do it here. Or if I want to decrease that, I can do it here. And then you hit reset. If you want to get it back to what it came with. So now it does one I think I use with this one. Let's take a look. Yeah. You guys getting uh, getting excited about this? I mean, look at that. It looks now, to me. It looks to me like anything that's sharp in there is treated foreground. Is that right? Correct. It okay. tries to see that. In fact, I'm going to show you something since you mentioned that. Um, in fact, let's do it right now. I'm going to go back to Photoshop. <clears throat> I'm going to open that image, make it bigger. Photoshop has some new stuff that I use a lot. And some people haven't heard of it yet, so I'll teach you. Filter, neural filters are in the newest editions of Photoshop. Now, we've been always going down to the bottom with our filters, but this neural filter is at toward the top. And here's what you get for your money. A bunch of stuff, but this one called depth blur is now one of my favorite new things to do. It says, focus on the subject. Okay, I'll let it do that for me. If, I, if I'm really lazy, I can do that, but I'm gonna show you other ways to do it. You see what just happened to the background? Yep. Now, I can change the amount of blur with this guy, watch this. I can say, I don't want it blurred very much. So I have all these choices of blurriness. Focal range is the biggie. You know those people that have lots of money, you know, either their parents gave it to them or they were brilliant, did cool things and made lots of money. And they can afford really expensive lenses like F1.4, 1.8. Well, guess what? So can you by changing the focal range right here. If you see that there's something not far enough back to be caught in that blur, you can change the focal length just like that. So instead of a $7,000 lens, you've got $10 a month Photoshop. Is that cool? <laughs> you also have a lot of new things, style transfer, and I didn't come in to teach all this, but I'm showing you, 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 this is only the beginning. And these need some work yet. But again, you can change the strength of it. 
the opacity of it and keep working it until you get something that feels right. But I wanted you to see it's under filter, neural filters, and the best new one is depth blur, okay? Any questions on that? That's crazy. Yep. Photoshop elements or just Photoshop? I don't know if elements has this. Uh, my friend who teaches, who does all of it, I will ask him and then I can link back to you. I used to have Photoshop 11, now I have 20. It's not, has not been easy to use. Yeah, there's, the thing is, they, they keep working these, like skin smoothing, super zoom, all this stuff that's going on, they're testing it. And they ask over here, are you satisfied with the results? If you say yes or no, you are allowed to tell them why you were or not. And they're, they're actually paying attention to this. And by the way, I, I think I mentioned it to you before, the guy who runs Adobe graduated from Bowling Green, Ohio. So he is one of ours. I'm hoping he's still listening. <laughs> so, all right, let's cancel that out. So now, Jerry, this might be a good time to talk a little bit about your mentoring people. services. About your what? Your mentoring services. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you your painting. Oh, thank you. 28,000. Okay. I'll put it in my next art show. There you go. That last, it actually is really cool. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. Let me show you the original again. Because I, you know, I have these arguments with these guys that don't want to change anything. I go, well, that's your choice, but I don't want to look at your pictures. Well, I think part of that though, Jerry, is the photographer's growth and process. <laughs> right. He, you know, each person goes through their photography journey at different times and different levels and different ways. And, you know, what I sent you was a, from a few years ago, but every one of us has a different journey. And some of us are really happy when we just get them in focus. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That. You know, and then as you develop beyond that, you know, the spray and pray and different yes. things like that. <laughs> and looking at the depth of field calculator every time yeah. you're out in the field to make sure. I love you, you Cheryl. Right you better. understand all of this. <laughs> you know, I mean, you get, you, you, you go through that. And if you're just starting out, this stuff is mind blowing. Well, I didn't show you. It may thing. not be what you're ready for. Have you noticed a change in the sky? Yeah, you must have did a little bit of something with the um, color I'll balance. You. I'll show you. So you Light balance. Open, open up your picture again, blow it up. And, it, you know, I love these rocks. You know, my background is geology, of course, but I also taught meteorology. But I'm looking at the sky, I'm going, eh, that's interesting, but how about this? Edit, sky replacement. Oh, yeah. Now, the problem is, because I'm an idiot, I put in so many skies, it takes like half a day for me to load this thing up, but I loaded it before, so because I know I'd be talking to you guys. But you see what this is already put in a sky. And I add all kinds of skies. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of skies. If I want a dramatic sky, So the way you do this is you collect your pictures, then you say, well, I'd like to make a new folder and call it my skies or whatever. Then when you click the plus sign, you go to the folder that has them and you, get, you add them right in here. Look at, you have lightning. Did you know you had lightning that day? No, but I do now. So we had thunder snow because that's a snow picture and you got some <laughs> thunder snow and some lightning going on. That's right. Look at this, star trails. <laughs> So Jerry, you're saying that you really will use your own images as sky options rather than- no, I, shoot, I shoot clouds probably two, three times a week. Okay, good. I have thousands. And then you that put them cool. right in here. Yeah, because you've, cool. you've got to be careful with the sky replacement thing using just the Photoshop ones. 
yes. that they give everybody you. Everybody else has them too. Because <laughs> everybody else has them too. Right. And That's we went good. to an art gallery here not too long. This was a few years ago when Sky Replacement was a little harder than the one click stuff. And one photographer had four images and they were all different places, but they all had the same sky. Bad and boy. as a photographer, we noticed that. Yes, we do. <laughs> you great. know, as a casual person who may be buying that photo, they may not notice that. <laughs> so just be careful with it. Since I'm here, if it's okay, I'll go one step farther. When you pick a sky, there's another menu behind this one and you click it. And now if you have a problem with the way the two, the sky is merging with your foreground, you can shift that edge. You can also face the edge off a little bit more. See how it's changing that? You can also change the brightness of it. You can change this temperature. You want it a little warmer or cooler, you can do that. You can scale it. Now you don't go making it smaller because <laughs> you see it, but you can make it bigger and then do this. Once you make it bigger, you go into the picture and you can move it around to get it exactly where you want it. You can flip it. If you want to see that happen. It also has these multiple and screen modes one is sometimes better than the other. Usually multiply works. You have a lighting adjustment and a color adjustment. And that's happening on the foreground. You notice that changing the, the mountain's color. And you can now put this to either a duplicate or a new layer. All of this, and it's so fun, because you can add it, make it your own for real. Okay, there was one more thing I was going to show you. Let me see what that's over here. How are we doing on time, Shirley? It's 10 after the hour. Okay. So I think we're doing okay. Maybe another five, 10 minutes and then wrap up with questions. Okay. Well, I, I think I've covered most of the things. I wanted to make sure I you understood that when you have a photo like this, there's a lot to be done in photo deep art effects. So when you open it and you pull it up, oh, here, actually, this is one I did. Uh, let's see, that's on the desktop. Yeah, let's go back to here. So that was the original. Go back to the desktop and pull up the one we played with. Look at this. $15,000. <laughs> now, remember, if you want to add more, you've got things like Jixi Picks. You also have Filter Forge. I ain't going to get into that because that I've been working with that a lot, and that, that's a whole nother night. But Snap Art with this picture would work really well. And to do this one, if I just leave it with the thick paint, and I say, yeah, I'm going to leave everything else pretty much the way it is. Get ready right here and apply that. And here's my picture. And you say, well, no, I don't get it. Well, remember this. <laughs> what subject let's go to the southwest sold 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 oh wait a minute these look a lot like what we just did son of a gun except these are real paint you can see how thick it is in some of these sections. Well, sold. But I'm going to auto tone a little bit, deepen that. Might do a little work in Photoshop to make this, the road a little more interesting. But you get the idea. We can make real paintings right now without ink, without paint. 
Isn't that amazing? It is. I think I'm pretty much done, Shirley. I think okay. I got, I think I got, oh, I was gonna show you this real quick. Um, <clears throat> remember we brought this picture up, this guy. But yeah, what I did, good. I went in and I'll tell you what, this is a good segue. I go right to my photo page, Let's go to Facebook. <clears throat> And I decided to throw a few of these on here, shake people up. I like putting things on here to make people talk. Now you know I did those. Found this house in Manawa. Here's one. Look at this. That came out of deep artifacts. But it didn't come out just like that. It came out kind of like what you just saw. See here? So what I'm telling you is this, let's hide this for a minute. I had to go in and spend an hour or two working this face into reality. Now I'm gonna try something, and this is a real good trick if it, if it works on this one. I go in to liquefy, and I say, I want the human over here and I want his face. I want to make this bigger. So let's get the magnifier. Okay, now I've got the guy. Oh, it worked. I come over to eye size. I want the eye size to change. Did you see that? Hmm. Yeah. I want this eye to change. I want a little squinier. The mouth. What can I do with the mouth? I want him to smile. I have baby pictures where the baby was just kind of looking at the mother. And I went in here and I made it smile and you should see the reaction. Oh my gosh. Look, look at he's smiling at me. Yes, he was <laughs> in Photoshop. So the point is you can make a lot of changes here. The nose height, look at that. You can change the chin, the lower lip, upper. So anyway, I do a lot of that. And then I come in and I do a lot of work with the blur tool because I soften up all of these images where, where the lines are showing. And then I always work the eyes. I usually put a catch light and I'll use a brush with white. I'll make a tiny little mark right there and maybe one right there. Then I'll take the blur tool and I'll go back over top of it, soften it. See, now it looks more like a studio. So the point is I spent a lot of time working on AI portraits, knowing that no one else will ever see or be able to create this painting. This is it. Now I wanted to show you one more thing and I swear I'm where I'm done. There is a program you can buy, Rod and I have it, it's called DOP. I'll show you, let me get rid of these. And I'll pull this out. Let's use, let's use, let's see what I have in the program. I think I got some in here I can do with. Shirley Impressionist. And yeah, let's use that one and Let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you that when I resize these, this is a two and a half megabyte picture. If I say resize 197 megabytes out of deep art effects. So the point is, oh, I want a big canvas. I want a, you know, 36 by 40. You can do it right in deep art effects. It works. Uh, let's see, I wanted to get two. Okay, let's just use test here. Uh, abstract. Okay, these two will work. So I have two pictures that are the same but different. As you see, one's a lot more painterly. If I go back to the original one, 
there is a filter and I have a, uh, a link to show you where to get it. It's called, you do it in scripts, and it's called DOP Texture Blending. It's incredible. What it does, is it puts these together and it gives you this in Photoshop, all of that. And what that means is I go to global levels and I double click and I get the properties panel up and I pull the white over until it touches. I go to the next one, levels master. I look at this one again, I pull the white over till it touches. The last one is the master. Work from the center out and you lighten and darken this so you get it just the way you want it. Then I say, well, I want that to be more or less blurred. I can click on the blurred. I can change the opacity to bring forward or recede the other picture. You see what I'm saying? You have all these ways of changing this picture. You can change the hue saturation, but it has combined two completely different images. And it did it instantly. And that's about it. Now I'll show you my site. And then we'll get to that. I can show you where to get that DOP if you're interested. History, let's go to view, reading list. And where is it? United Creation DOP, it is, here it is. It's called Digital Outback Photo. He's no longer really developing it. His name's Uwe Steinmuller, but you can buy it. It's $24.95. It's worth it. I use it all the time, get with PayPal. And it's easy to use. They have documentations and demos. So if you get lost, you can keep coming back here. But it's just outbackphoto.com. It's one word. Of course, this will all be on the video if you didn't take notes or anything. All right, the last thing, if I hit JJ, this is my new website I put together. For those of you who have Olympus cameras, if you have this one, you click on it, you immediately have the entire manual waiting for you. It's only 636 pages, don't get excited. If you have the new camera like Rod has and I get mine Saturday, the entire manual is here. So in case you're buying those, I think Bruce was going to get it. If you want the manual, just click on that and you're in. So hit enter. And these are the things I've been working on in terms of just straight imaging. This is one I did with Rod. Here's one I did down in Florida. And then you come down here, it says next page to see before and after images, thumbnails, see more artwork, my Facebook, email or you can pay me if you want to take a course from me but right here if i want to go to the next page i say i like teaching i teach these two but as you know i teach about everything on, my, on all the plugins and back to payment see more examples i do restoration this is the before that was quite a job I did a video called Florida in a week. We'll do that some other time. It takes about 20 minutes. See more examples. Now watch this. Here's the before. And if you take courses from me, I'll teach you how to do that. Or that. Or that. Let's get that out of the way. More examples. Before pretty typical, a little bit of enhancement, not a lot. This photo won second in an international photography competition. I got a really nice trophy, it was cool. Here's a house in Manaway. Get rid of power lines, get rid of the junk. More examples. Now watch this one. Yeah, I got a picture of a store. Oh yeah, with the baby. So I like to play. I took this picture of a girl at a wedding, turned it into a very soft painting, beautiful. Before, after. I photographed this guy in a bar down in Columbus. 
I said, believe me, when I send you your picture, you won't believe what you see. And he said, oh my God, <laughs> before, after. Same picture. The power is in the software. Yeah, and like the argument has been, well, you know, you shouldn't change anything. Um, every painter changes everything. And I consider myself a painter. Well, not really, because I'm not using paints, but I'm a photo artist. And that gives me the license to change any damn thing I want. And I do, because I want it to feel good. And I have a lot of people who, who give me uh, heck if I do it wrong, <laughs> believe me. But a lot of times I'm getting pretty good, pretty good reviews. Look at the changes he can make before, after. Here's Acadia. This was up in the Cleveland Museum. This is the same photo, the one right beside it. Before, after. Look at the difference here, night shot. This is a machine gun Kelly. I was hired to photograph him for something he was doing in Cleveland. So I turned him into a drawing in Photoshop. Now he's changed his looks. He doesn't look anything like this. I, I should send him his picture reminder. Here's another example, Photoshop at its best. Two girls, I'm in Florida, big waves are coming in. I go, nah, it doesn't feel right. Oh, that does. And this one, if you just sit back, it'll run a slideshow, or if you click the button, you can go through a bunch of them all. Just see what my artwork looks like. I'll go on. Now, you consider the size of print you like to purchase. Tell me the surface, including the frame or not. This is a picture I did. It, this is my bathroom. And it's pretty big. So you can use your art to enhance your walls. That was a 30 by 40 canvas print. I also have references there. The sunflower has been Ukraine's national flower for a long time, but has swiftly become a worldwide symbol of solidarity for the country and its people since the Russian invasion began. So I liked having that on my website. And then back to the payment page, if you are interested. So if somebody is interested in having you help them with this kind of stuff or even just um, learning different softwares that would all be done by zoom and i believe there was a place to contact you on your website correct yes or on your facebook page too yes, yes. <clears throat> one of the things uh i must have taken it off here i charge 45 an hour i have it's a at doctor, the top i have a doctor who uh he has me work with him once a week and he just got back from uh, Death Valley. He just gets so excited because we start with a picture of, you know, sand dunes, but when we're done, he goes crazy. <laughs> he says, oh my God, I'm so glad I did this. And uh, like I said, it becomes his, works of, his work of art instead of just a photo. Yeah, if you live near here, I have people come into my house or I actually can go to houses, but driving to Utah is a little distant. So I'll wait on that. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Jerry? Nope. You probably all went to bed. <laughs> well, I am going to thank you and I'm going to stop the recording. And then if anybody feels they want to ask questions after the recording stops, that's okay too. So the Good. recording is now going to stop. <laughs>